everyone, welcome back to Cincinnati Zoo Tales. I'm Jenna. And I'm Mark. We really appreciate everyone tuning in for yet another episode. We've got an episode I've been excited to record for a little while. We've got a whole group here, so it's always tricky working everyone's schedules out and getting everyone on the same page, but I've been really excited about this show for a while. We're going to talk about gorillas, specifically Gladys, and a big medical event that she has gone through for the last couple of months now. I'm really excited to hear about it, but just to introduce our guests, we've being joined by Dr. Mike Winninger. Dr. Mike is the um, director of animal health here at the Cincinnati Zoo, and then two members of our primate care team, two of our keepers over there, Grace Malloy and Stephanie Sauer. Dr. Mike's been on the show before, but Grace and Stephanie have not. Thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Thanks yeah. for having us, yeah. Yeah, I'm excited to hear about, there's a lot of collaboration with this story mm -hmm, too, so I'm excited mm -hmm. to talk about that and all the cool stuff that the zoo does to take the best care of our animals as possible. But first, if each of you want to give us a little rundown on how you became a, a veterinarian or a zookeeper or where you are today, that would be awesome. Do you want to start, Dr. Mike? Sure. So I'm Mike Winninger. I'm a veterinarian and I've wanted to be, I'll start when I was born. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to go that far. It's a long time ago. Um, I've known I wanted to be a veterinarian, specifically a zoo vet, since I was a little kid. And um, luckily, that's where I ended up now, and I'm happy to be here. Oh, that was a quick one. <laughs> <laughs> He's to the point. I'm leaving yeah. time for the more fun things. Okay. Nobody cares about 18 jobs I've had. <laughs> my <Never education>. <laughs> Um, I'm Grace Malloy. I've been here for 11 years now. Um, I didn't know I wanted to be a keeper. Um, I didn't know that until, um, basically I was an intern, but I went to school originally for psych, um, and then I took a bioanthro elective, which covers primatology, um, and then I fell in love my freshman year, and I, um, you know, switched over, and here I am. Um, so I've been here since my internship, yeah. That's yep. awesome. I mean, that could go a lot of different ways, mm -hmm. but was, like, the internship, some, like, at that point you knew you wanted to be a zookeeper, or was the internship sort of, like, feeling out? It was definitely feeling it out, and just, I, I knew at that point that I definitely wanted to work primates. Okay. Um, I didn't know I wanted to be a keeper keeper. Even when I was hired full-time, I was like, I'm just going to be here for a year or so, and then I'm going to go to grad school. Um, and then... Now it's been, like I said, it's been 11 years. <laughs> yeah, we convinced so, you for yeah. sure. <laughs> I was just saying, are there still thoughts of going back to grad school? Um, I think there's definitely still thoughts of going back to grad school just to go back to grad school. Okay. But um, I wouldn't, I would still want to stay here. Like, I, I really can't picture myself doing anything else. So, yeah, it's you, once you get so involved and in depth with the care and everything, it's just kind of hard to, to turn away from it at this point. Do you, a quick question I'm going to ask both of you. Are gorillas your favorite, or like primates in general? Would you always pick gorillas? That's hard. Um, yeah, don't I, make anyone feel bad. Don't <laughs> <laughs> Just as a species, not as individuals. Your gorillas um, may hear this, so speak lightly. <laughs> you can't hear that behind the glass. You can't hear. Um, that's really hard. Um, I definitely have an affinity for chimps um, and bonobos. And I really like orangs, um, but and I love prosimians. Um, so I don't know. That's a really difficult question. I think that, but for me, as long as I am working primates, I'm very happy. Okay. So. Cool. But have you ever worked chimps? Have you started here as an intern? And um, I volunteered at Chimp Haven okay. in Kentucky. So, okay. so you have had some experience. Um, with I've each been other. around chimps. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Gotcha. What about you, Stephanie? Um, I was the girl that took the quiz, you know, like when you're in like sixth grade and the, what you like are supposed to do when you get older. And I would like, a veterinarian was like the closest thing. So I would always purposely answer the questions to be animal related. <laughs> um, so it actually be that veterinarian because it was the only animal related you know, profession. Um, but I knew I wanted to work with animals. I knew dogs and cats were too boring for me. I knew exotic <laughs> animals was like where I wanted to go. Um, I'm definitely not the type to be in field or anything like that in Africa. So I knew zoos was like where I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. um, primates was definitely my goal. I always thought I would be hired like with another animal and kind of puzzle piece my way through the zoo to get to primates. Um, but I started here with my internship in 2005. I did um, gorillas and then manatees. At that point we did two different areas. And um, primates was always my goal. I volunteered every Saturday for two years until I got hired in the primate center in 2007. And I've been here ever since. Were you, did you fill in any like seasonal or temporary keeper roles? Or no, were you just I've, volunteering no. And then you got hired full time? Yeah, I, another keeper moved to, decided to move to another area after 13 years, which kind of, feel, nobody else signed for it right then. And 
I had been volunteering and was at the right spot at the right time. And Grace, you were an intern and then got hired full time. Did you? I was an intern and then I was a temp. Okay. So I was. I didn't even finish my internship. Okay. Um, oh, nice. And um, Benny went to, had to go to Night Watch because Connie at the time was getting knee surgery. Okay. Um, and then he was there. There and they kept telling me like this could be like three months and I was like that's amazing like yeah. I'm just happy to be yes. here <laughs> and then the temp position ended up lasting almost a year okay um, and then um, Ashley O'Connell moved from Primate to Canyon um, and then I filled her position okay yeah yeah, yeah it's crazy that both of you mm-hmm. like you didn't have to do the whole run around of a million mm-hmm. departments like I didn't no. yeah. <laughs> which I mean I kind of regret because I do I did want to work with a lot uh, of other yes. speech I always thought I would be in a different area like every five to seven years uh-huh. like change areas and I still thought that even when I got hired with gorillas but like here I am what 17 years later and I'm so with it just hasn't felt right to yeah. leave so yeah. I mean it's it's it could happen. Uh-huh. I don't foresee it happening. Yeah. But. So are gorillas definitely your favorite? Or um, they're you... definitely my favorite. They're definitely the most physical. Like, working with them mm-hmm. is very physical, so I'm glad I didn't end up. I can't imagine being close to retirement and, like, working around. <laughs> 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 so maybe I'll move, you know, somewhere that's not as heavy say, I have load. a retirement plan. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't think I could last there towards okay. retirement. Right, oh, right. This is interesting. Um, so. so, yeah, I don't know what that looks like, um, but here I am. I'll be 42 on Monday, and I'm still feeling physically happy able birthday. to do it. Yeah. Oh, yes. Happy early birthday. We're all Thanks. like, maybe if we make it to 50, be, <laughs> if our bodies make it to 50, I'll be right. proud of myself. Oh, that's so interesting. I love hearing how people get to where they are. Mm-hmm. Um, and you guys kind of, I mean, not quickly, but I mean, you volunteered for two years, but right. you like, were then you're ready for a full-time job with one of the most dangerous animals in the right. zoo. So right. that's incredible. Yeah. And that probably speaks to the job you're able to do as an intern and then as a volunteer, right? Clearly mm-hmm. the team thought really highly of you and they were willing to take a chance on you. And yeah. 17 years later, it's paid off. Love <laughs> right, to see right. it. <laughs> For sure. Well, before we get started on Gladys' story and everything that happened with her, will you two tell us a little bit about your gorillas, um, which ones you have, the groups they live in, maybe how you determine that and throw in any like natural history facts and personality quirks? Sure. Wait, you can go ahead and start. Okay. <laughs> um, so we manage three groups. Um, they're three very different groups. Um, we have our bachelor group, um, which is Congo, Chip, and Pende. Um, they came to us from Detroit Zoo. Um, they've been living with each other for over about 20, 20 years years now. Wow. Um, so they're very familiar. They're very established. They're um, all half-brothers. Um, and they are all very different personalities. Um, Congo, he's our most dominant male in that group. He's, and he's the most studliest (laughs) male I've ever worked with. Um, he's very handsome. He's, uh, just 400 pounds, um, or just over. And, um, he is just so calm, cool, collected, like, mm, nothing really bothers him. Um... And then you have Chip, who's the eldest. Well, that's the funny thing is Congo is the youngest. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. Chip is the oldest, and um, he's 28 right now. Um, and um, he is very easily flustered, um, pretty temperamental, but um, we love his build because um, he's just, like, short and stout, and <laughs> he's just kind of like your very typical, like, silverback build. Um, and then Pende, the middle guy... Um, he is very quirky. Um, he's very interested in people, very people oriented. He'll like, he's the one that tends to watch and kind of patrol the public and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Um, and he's the most vocal with us too. Exactly. So we almost communicate oh, a little cool. bit more with him. Yeah. yeah. That's fun. You walk in and you'll be like, Hey boys. And then P immediately is purring. Oh, <laughs> or when we're leaving, we'll say good night yeah. boys. And yeah. you hear him grumble. You yeah. know, in the <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, and I call him P. <laughs> um, he for Pende. He's got a lot of nicknames. He's got a, like, he came a with a nicknames. lot of nicknames yeah. from Detroit. They wrote them all out. Oh, that's Aww. fun. <laughs> and he's like, I know my nicknames too. He was. He's definitely a big favorite amongst keepers for sure. Can you tell us a little bit about how, like, with gorillas, there's a silver back, mm-hmm. but all males eventually have a silver back, literally, physically. Yes, yes. physically. So, and they, how is it determined? It's not. Is it age? Is it? Will you go into so, that a little just bit? like humans, they kind of go through their stages of puberty. Um, and it's literally around the age 14, 15, 16 for them that they start developing uh, the silver hairs on the back and then they start getting all this size on them. Um, and then that sagittal crest really builds up on the top of their skull. So you can see it when you look at silverbacks, they have, you know, their 
heads kind of go up in a cone shape, or we call them shark fins. Um, that's because they have this giant bone on the top of their head where all their jaw muscles is attached to, and it gives them a really powerful mandible to chew through all those really tough foods like roots and shoots and uh, bark and stuff like that. Um, and um, so that kind of happens and then usually around the age of 20 21 is kind of when they level out in terms of their hormones mm -hmm. so a lot of times um in in zoos um the ssp doesn't even recommend for silverbacks to go with females until they're about early 20s oh, okay. so that they're kind of a little more chill uh, um get those crazy teenage years yeah. out of the way <laughs> exactly, yeah. Literally, exactly. <laughs> um but in the wild you know males typically leave their natal groups when um at least in western lowland species um, males will typically leave their natal groups around the, anywhere between eight and 10 or, you know, when the dad is fed up with their behavior okay. and they're like, get out of here. Um, and then they can naturally form bachelor groups in the wild. They kind of hang out amongst each other until they're able to, um, you know, gather up their own family groups and okay. females. Um, so just to help manage, uh, populations in, um, in zoos, um, a lot of zoos have uh, bachelor groups everywhere you go. So this is our first one. Um, so we as keepers, we love it. It's They're actually it, one of the easiest groups to manage. Really? <laughs> yeah. it's, a lot of facilities weren't really built to handle bachelor yeah. groups. So as new facilities are building um, their areas, they're... There's different things you have to add in to manage these bachelor groups versus, mm -hmm. like, a breeding group. L literally, like, to make it stronger to, like, more, because they're stronger or just the space? Because it's more because to, they like, it's like they like to be together, but they don't want to be together. They don't want to see together. each other. Oh, so you need okay. to have larger areas to uh, a lot of facilitate visual barriers. For, Yeah, a lot of different stratifications and stuff just so they can get away from each other, have their own space, but... I mean, even if the boys, like when we shift them, we kind of shift them, you know, one by one um, so that, you know, it's a very calm um, procedure, I guess you could say. Um, but, you know, if somebody's taking a while or deciding to move, you know, they'll start calling for one another because it's like, hey, where's my <laughs> They where's enjoy my each other's company, yeah, they but they be don't around each other. want to give each other the wrong um, looks. Okay. There's a lot of visual barriers and things. Yes. So. When you guys we, have a lot of strategy you have to employ yeah, 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 on a day-to-day. Yeah, -day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, for sure. So when we were fortunate enough to receive a huge renovation and get our indoor habitat and stuff, that was always the goal. And it's the one kind of situation that I personally haven't been involved in. You know, I helped hand-raise Gladys and Kamina, and, like, we've had a lot of different um, dynamic groups that we've had to manage, but managing bachelor groups is the one thing that I have not done in my career so far. So, and now, you, now yeah. you're getting to yeah, yeah. For sure. So that's cool. That is cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So were these, these three boys, were they always as a bachelor group in Detroit too, or yeah. were they put together specifically because their personalities would mesh? Um, they've been a bachelor group, um, at Detroit the entire time. Okay. Um, Detroit used, to, oh, you know what? I don't know exactly. I feel like they used to have a mixed group a long, long time ago, but it wasn't a breeding group. Okay. Um, but I could be very wrong about I know that. these boys, um, I, this is the part that yeah. it's hazy on the history of them. I know two boys went somewhere and were part of a breeding group, and then they came back together pretty oh, early on. Yeah. yeah, they've been together, like, I, I mean, they're all, so um, P and Congo are 26, um, and then... I believe it's either 26 or 27 and then chips 28. Um, so they've been together for over 20 years. Okay. So they've been mm -hmm. the majority of their life. They have been together. Gotcha. Yeah. And do you foresee them being able to live together for the rest of their lives? Even though like, and that maybe they would naturally go off and find females at this point, their hormones and everything. So we'll, we'll let them get along. Yeah. Does that make sense? I mean, that's kind of the plan okay. unless something crazy dynamically happens. Um, and then we aren't able to manage it for whatever reason. Um, but that would kind of be like a last resort. Okay. Um, but yeah, for the foreseeable future that they cool. will, they will be together. Yeah, yeah. When a gorilla is born, the SSP pretty much has their life planned out, uh, whether they're going to be a breeding male or not, unless something crazy happens and all of a sudden their DNA becomes genetically valuable. You know, they might get called to breed. Okay. I don't know if they'd hit a, re a certain age and then they yeah, like, oh, yeah, yeah, would. Yeah. Their certainly. life is pretty much planned out okay. once they're born. Whether That's very when we find out if they're male or female, the SSP kind of knows where they're going to go. Yeah. Interesting. Cool. Mm -hmm. So tell us about our other group, our other two troops. Um, so we have Ndume's group, um, and Ndume's group consists of Ma Ndume, Mara, and Malinzi. Uh, Malinzi and Mara are a mother-daughter pair. Uh, they've both uh, born and raised here at Cincinnati. Well, born and raised. Born and, <laughs> born and lived here at Cincinnati. 
Um, so they are part of, and um, Ndume was actually born in Cincinnati as well. So Ndume, this October will be 43. Wow. Um, Malinzi will be 42 this year in December. They're um, actually related. So this whole group is actually related, but okay. they are a non-breeding group. Okay. Um, they are just together for social purposes. Um, the Cincinnati line, the bloodline of Cincinnati is very well represented mm -hmm. in um, zoo populations. So um, our old line, our old bloodline um, <laughs> oftentimes does not have breeding recommendations okay. at all. Um, so they are, you know, they're a great group together. Um, and Dume is a very particular male. Um, he lived a certain way for a very long time in his life. And so he um, just kind of likes things. He's very, like I said, he's very particular. Um, and these females make it very easy for him. They're, oh, good. they're you mm -hmm. know, Melinzi's very relaxed. She's very chill. She's just like, okay, we're going here now. Um, and then Mara's definitely, uh, more spunky, but she's kind of Melinzi's bodyguard in a way, <laughs> uh, her daughter. Um, but Mara is still very overall, um, a very easy female to, to get along with in that group. So. And what's the average life expectancy? Cause that sounds pretty old so in zoos mm -hmm. they can live up to their 60s wow um it's rare uh, but it is becoming more a little more common um 50s are definitely more heard of um, we had samantha here um she passed away in 2020 she was 50 years old mm -hmm. um and then in in the wild they act, can actually live up until their early 40s mm -hmm. um but i think mid 30s is a little more um uh, average for the mortality rate okay um so um so yeah they can in zoos they can live for quite a while um i think the oldest right now she's in germany she's early 60s i swear germany has all of the wow. oldest animals. <laughs> i think all the, the germans people, kind of figured out that we were talking about the other day that's funny but they're also living a lot longer in zoos too because we're using operant conditioning and training the animals to do different things mm -hmm. and we're able to kind of see anything and we have really and, and great treat it early on. Health. We have a really great vet staff. Yes. We have great vet staff. really well with us. So we're able to kind of get on top Thank of you. any issues well, that yeah. the animal might have. Yeah, and you're training them for medical behaviors, better, right. which is yeah. amazing. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. heart checkups and things right. that we'll exactly. talk about in a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just even, I haven't even been at the zoo that long, you know, and even in my time, I feel like preventative care has mm -hmm. become so much more of mm -hmm. a front-facing thing, whereas before it was always, we'll see a problem and then we'll treat the problem. Yeah. But preventative yeah, yeah, care yeah. has been amazing, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've even, um, we've really upped our, like, even our vaccine game, like, the mm -hmm. flu vaccines, like, they get regularly every year, um, they get their COVID vaccine now. And it's all um, voluntary, right? It's all voluntary. Really? It's amazing. Pan That's injection, awesome. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, we're working on, like, blood draws. Uh, with the group so that's um that's very hard to do with gorillas just because you know with their black skin and black hair it can be really tough to see the vein mm -hmm. um but that would be a preventative behavior as well so you can just like if we see something we can just draw the blood um and then get you know the panels and stuff back um and then and that's really important too with gorillas because um in, in zoos they tend to be very susceptible to heart disease mm -hmm. um so we had um, at least in my career now, we've had three gorillas. Jomo had died of um, heart failure, basically. Um, Anu had congestive heart failure. Um, and then Samantha, she was she was very old, but mm -hmm. yeah, she had issues with her heart as well. So if we can stay on top of that, then, you know, we can do a lot. Extend their life. Yeah, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. definitely. So tell us about your final group, and then we'll get into Gladys' The big finale. Story. Yeah. The big finale. Yeah. <laughs> um, so our final group is Mbelu's group. Um, and this is a very dynamic group. They keep us on our very. toes. <laughs> um, they, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and Belly's group, uh, and Belly's the silverback. He is 22 now. Um, he's, he turned 22 in May, I believe. Um, and then we have Chewy, who is the oldest female in the group. She's, she'll be 29 in September. Um, and then Gladys, who is 11. And then Mona, um, she turns 10 on Sunday. Oh, wow. awesome. Um, Happy birthday to Mona. Yeah. <laughs> and then Elle, who is youngest, um, she'll be nine on the 25th. She's still a baby. I don't know the gorilla <laughs> at all. I hardly get out over there. But I'm like, no, she's supposed to be like a three-year-old. She's such a tank now. She is a little tank. But um, actually, in my memories on Instagram, like a video popped up of her from four years ago. And she's stuffing her face with celery. And she's just so small and innocent and, like, still 
they're still playing all the time. Uh, but when you typically when you eat, reach the age of six and seven, females are considered adults. Okay. Um, so they're definitely all in their young adulthood. There's still a lot of raging hormones. And they're figuring it out. Um, so like I said, that group definitely keeps us on our toes. Um, we're always trying to um, kind of break their uh, thought processes to keep you, them. You usually have more adult females yeah. kind of scattered in a group. Yeah, so yeah. even though the silverback is the leader of the group, there's still a hierarchy in the females. Okay. Mm-hmm. And these three girls are so close in age, they're trying to figure out that hierarchy. Exactly. So, yeah. And then Chewie's the only other adult female in there. So there's no moms in there to help discipline like the other kids okay. and kind of help figure out that hierarchy. So they're all just trying to bat I'd say it the, out. Yeah. The family out. group yeah. used to be Jo like, that was originally Jomo's family group and Samantha was in there and Samantha was the dominant yes. female. Like it was very uh, clear. Was the, the hierarchy sure. was very clear when I first started. But as deaths have happened um, and groups have changed, there is no clear Mm-mm dominant female right now and so they're trying to sort that out mm-hmm. um yeah that's tricky yeah. socially complex animals when yes. they haven't figured that out is yes a lot to yeah. deal yeah. with <laughs> and they're growing up they're trying yeah. they're trying to figure it out and learn and all that stuff so and like they don't really have a lot of um female influence to mm-hmm. kind of guide them and mm-hmm. discipline them and direct them so and Grace, I just want to give you a quick shout out because for all the listeners, just to peel back the curtain, normally when we talk about ages, at least for me on the podcast, I've got like a sheet of paper with all of our animals' <laughs> ages written on it because it's hard to keep track of 50 animals. She's got these yes. birthdays yes. and ages I mean, memorized. It's super impressive. I'm, I'm thank all you, right thank now. You. I have three kids and you will be on the phone with a medical professional. They're like, oh, what's the date of birth? I'm like, wait. Let me, Let me think. <laughs> <laughs> Which child is this? When were they born? So, I, yeah, I'm not a good person. She's got a lockdown. I love it. It is kind of hard. I will say, it is kind of hard, though, the longer that I'm here. In my head, I'm just like, oh, Ivan's still, you know, 12 years old. But really, he's I forget to 19 add it, add now. <laughs> yeah. so, 10 years later, um, I'm like, oh, wait. I'm like, I know their birth date. They're the age you started. But, like, the age <laughs> can be hard to, like, remember now. At this do the point. math in Yeah, because there's still that original <laughs> age that you started at. Yeah. So. yeah. Yeah. Just retreat back to that. But you mentioned, you know, this troop, it's really dynamic. It's got these young girls that mm-hmm. are kind of a challenge yeah. at times. And Gladys is going to be the focus of our conversation today. But just a little bit about Gladys's backstory. Stephanie, you mentioned it earlier. Mm-hmm. Will you guys just tell us a little bit about Gladys's history? What What's so unique about her past and everything? Yeah, she came to us. Um, her mom was a first-time mom and just wasn't showing those maternal instincts um, so it was up to the keepers. They decided that they needed to pull her and she needed to be hand reared somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, so you immediately contact the SSP and then they kind of start searching, putting their feelers out of what zoo that she would be good to go to. Um, they, you originally try to get her back with, if you can try to train the mother to accept the baby back, but she just wasn't doing mm-hmm. that. So, um, at the time they decided we had a bunch of females that were proven mothers that did really good jobs. They weren't going to be breeding anytime soon. Um, so we could bring her here and do the hand raising process and try to get her in with one of our females. And so there's just a number, it's a checklist of things that she needs to learn um, before that you can actually introduce her. So since her surrogate mother would not be lactating since she did not give birth to her, um, she would need to get her nutrition from a bottle, from a keeper. So that's one of the main things is you're teaching her how to ride on your back, hold on, um, hold on to that up. hair. We're dressed up yeah. with funny hairy vests and... Uh, you know, we're crawling on our hands. We had even knee pads and everything. We were crawling through doors. Um, and then she's learning to get down off of me when her name is called to go up to the um, mesh of her bedroom area and get her bottles and stuff like that mm-hmm. until we can start transitioning her over to, like, solid foods. So, yeah, she came to us, and um, we went to, through that whole process. And How old was she when she arrived? Do you remember? She two months old. So she was born January 29th, and then she right. got here early, mid-February-ish. Right. So... Not even oh. a month, or just, yeah, just, just about weeks. a month. Okay. She was about four months old when we, when we introduced her. her. Okay. Yeah. okay. And how long do they typically nurse? Like, because you mentioned you guys have um, to bottle feed it. I'm sure that was a really right. intense like three process. Or four years. That's how oh, long. wow. Yeah, yeah usually they years. will nurse from their mom until their mom gets pregnant again and then has to wean her other and to nurse her new baby. Um, so, yeah, it was it was a while. And then there we may have milked it a little bit more, giving her her bottle. <laughs> well, of course. No. No so, yeah. No yeah. <laughs> literally, literally. They do get, I mean, it's just like a human baby. They, yeah. they Even though you're transitioning them to solid foods, and you know that's what they, that's kind of their go-to yeah, comfort. Their comfort. So yeah. she did get her milk for a little bit longer than needed. And it was just like 2% milk yeah. at that point. Um, 
but yeah, she did get that. And that had yeah. been a really cool experience. Too. Um, it, highlight of my career yeah. for sure. I mean, obviously, we don't want to see her being hand raised by humans, but I'm not gonna lie, it was definitely the highlight of my career yeah. to just see that and feel that and go through that whole process for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. What does the transition look like from? kind of integrating her into the group because obviously you don't want her to just be imprinted on humans and her to think she's a human. How does that process work of making sure she knows and understands that she's actually a gorilla? Mm -hmm. Like, well, You were part of it a little bit at uh, that point. <laughs> um, honestly, when, they, when we introed her, it was just kind of like, all right, that's it. Yeah. Um, and I remember it was just kind of like you just hope for the best. Yeah, but, I mean, she was still responsive to us. Like, even, like, walking down the hallways and stuff, and it was just kind of like, no, like, Melinda's your, mm -hmm. uh. your mom now. Um, so I think it, it, you know, it was a... a you had couple, to rip the Band-Aid off. Yeah, yeah. You just had it to, didn't last long. No, it didn't. It was only a day or two that yeah. she really... She was just looking for somebody to hold her. And oh, as long yeah, as she had somebody holding her and yeah. touching her, she was fine. Yeah. You, were, you didn't have concerns about Melinda or her having issues, like any aggression? Or no, and we had a plan B, a plan C, and a plan D. Yeah, yeah and the entire time, like, from um, we had that howdy mesh set up between mm -hmm. us, you know, us with Gladys, and then Melinda, and then they're, you know, she's getting fed right next to her, and they're, you know, mm. they are touching each other and stuff through the mesh and everything, um, obviously supervised. Um, a lot of positive interactions yeah, a lot between of posi Lindsay yeah. and Gladys. And if we had seen us. anything that would suggest otherwise, then we would have made a different call. But yeah, and um, well, as said before, but Lindsay's in, in Dime's group now, and she is very, like, mm -hmm. very chill. Um, maybe a little too chill sometimes. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, she. I don't think we really had any doubt that she would um, not be a good fit for Gladys. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So now, fast forwarding, what, 10 years? Did you say she's 10 years old? She's 11. She's 11. 11 years old now. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. She's fast forwarding 11 years. She had a bit of a traumatic event she happen. Did. What yeah. is this, in April, early April, April right? April 12th. Okay, yes. so <laughs> will you walk us through? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, April 12th. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah, will you walk us through what happened to Gladys and why she needed this veterinary care? Yeah, so April 12th... Um, the girls, you know, as we mentioned earlier, they are trying to figure out their hierarchy and, um, you know, hierarchies on dominance are serious business in the gorilla world. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, every once in a while they get in little squabbles, um, little, even just like, little, um, you can't see it, but I'm like, <laughs> just like kind of like, she's like, 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 and this was one of those things and, um, sorry, yeah, it was just kind of like a little slap towards Dr. Mike. Um, mm -hmm. And that's totally normal for them. And um, and unfortunately, they just got a hold of Gladys at the right angle. And it was just like this freak thing. Um, as soon as they like... It really wasn't a big yeah, thing at all. It really... It, yeah, it was Super like... Quick. Yeah. yeah, really quick. And, um, you know, they walked away from each other. And it was just kind of like, oh, Gladys is holding her arm. Like, there is something not right about this situation. Mm -hmm. um, and then we sat there watching her for like... With our faces glued to I the I thought mesh. she dislocated uh, her shoulder. So you I guys actually like, saw it happen, which is probably mm -hmm. helpful, or... Yeah. I mean, like, so you didn't have to guess, like, what happened, or... Oh, yeah, like, we knew yeah. that something happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it wasn't like we walked in and it was like, oh, why is Gladys yes. behaving like that? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah they, they just trying to pass each other, mm -hmm. you know, and kind of get to their spots. And, um, yeah, they just kind of... Barely got into it, and then we just saw Gladys holding her arm, kind of got everybody separated off, and we were just trying to see how she was moving, what was hurt, where exactly on her arm was hurt. Um, you know, we were hoping that it wasn't, it could just be a dislocation or a pulled muscle or something like that, um, but yeah. So then we immediately called, well... I was out working the outside job, and mm -hmm. I get a call to come over, and I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> um, Never a good call yeah. as a no. keeper. Yeah, um, <laughs> so I, I get up there. Stephanie's like, it's her shoulder. And I was like, no, it's her elbow. Um, <laughs> and we call Dr. Mike. He comes over, um, and they were awesome. The super quick response. Um, and I think within, like, 20 minutes, we were setting up to um, anesthetize her and... Um, Get x-rays. Get x-rays on her. On. And that's when we saw that the, the break <sighs> was, a, was a really, really extreme break right above the elbow. Which mm -hmm. is 
kind of incredible that she was just holding it, right? Like, yeah, she as a human, we there. would be screaming yeah, or yeah. yelling or she passing was, out yeah, or I don't know. I've never broken a bone yet. She but. wasn't making any noises. She looked concerned. Um, yeah, she looked a little worried. Yeah. But, like, she was just sitting there and literally just holding her elbow, looking at us. Um, and then she would kind of get up and move around. And then, you know, she wasn't using anything at mm. all. And it was just kind of dead hanging there, too. And so that's obviously where it's like, okay, we need a... Something's very wrong. And then Dr. Mike comes in with mm-hmm. the team. To the rescue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And yeah. what were you thinking? Or what is, how do you decide, like, your first steps? If you need to do an x-ray, if you need to anesthetize, if you should just sit and watch for a little bit. So I'm not so much a sit and watch in some of those, these situations, I guess, kind of person. I don't think anyone on our team really is. Um, but speaking of calls you don't want to get is when you're writing medical records and you're like, sweet, I'm going to have a quiet day to catch up. <laughs> <laughs> and then your phone rings and it's that. like, hey, so Gladys is holding her arm and it seems really like uncomfortable. It's kind of just, just holding it in a weird position. And I say, oh, okay, well, great. So um, we just went over and had a, like, just looked at her and you could see with how she was holding her arm that it wasn't held in a normal position. Um, and initially we did think it was going to be like an elbow luxation, like a dislocated elbow. Um, but the only way to really confirm that is to either feel it and move it through range of motion, which isn't really safe to do. Um, <laughs> so, um, I guess these guys could probably, they're great at training them to do fun things and important things. And so they could have probably trained her to do that, but it might've been a five minutes more. Um, <laughs> but so we, um, Just knowing how she was holding her arm, it was pretty obvious we needed to get x-rays and um, feel her arm under anesthesia. So we went back, grabbed all of our supplies, went down to her space, and then um, anesthetized her. And as soon as the x-ray came up, you could see there was an obvious fracture. It was very obvious. Yeah, Yeah, there wasn't much question. It was one of the easier diagnoses. (laughs) How stressed were you guys? I, what do you do? Right, that's yeah. why I mean, first you can't came put a cast on a girl. Like, well, right. you didn't you could, like, <laughs> put a cast on a girl, she'd rip it right off. You I know, mean, what, what is this, what does her future look like? One of our supervisors told us at a meeting, and we all thought the same thing, like, What's going to happen? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. What yeah. are they going to do? Yeah. Like, right. uh, this is awful. How do they help this situation? If we all felt so bad I for remember, you guys. I yeah. remember, like, as that first, that first initial look at her, where, you know, we're all in the... Um, bedroom space and um, I just remember looking at Amy and I just kind of like shook my head and I was like here we go here we go Mm -hmm. (laughs) just kind of like feeling a little hopeless a little Mm -hmm. defeated you know what is going to happen what's going to you know Um, and I'll be honest I think I kind of blacked out the rest of the day I don't know (laughs) Um, I just remember us getting a call later on seeing that Mm -hmm. David Orban had reached out to yeah that was um, quick his that same day to GE about a titanium cast and I think at that time I was kind of like sure no. yeah, yeah yeah okay right. yeah, right. <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> we'll see what happens you know um and um but then um you guys are already scheduled um surgery that weekend mm-hmm. so it happened on April 12th and then she had surgery on the 14th um so yeah, yeah will you tell us a little bit about yeah. that? Because that was yeah. a big collaboration, too. Um, mm-hmm. Tell us how you decided who to call or how it became what it was and what happened. Yeah, so we have um, friends at Children's Hospital, um, members of our board and our ambassador council and people who um, work at all kind of friends. And so um, I just I texted um, Dr. Mira and we... Um, I said, hey, do you by any chance do orthopedics in people? Because I know she's a surgeon. And she said, no, but I know the best person to do this. And so then she connected me with Dr. Denning, and then um, she brought in her a surgeon she works with. That's an upper extremity surgeon, which is crazy to me because we kind of have to be kind of surgeons for every part of every species. Yeah. And in people, there's like, a wrist surgeon. It's just, it's a little nuts to me. That is wild. Yeah, you're like, yeah. I can do surgery on a manatee and a gorilla, and they're like, I do fibulas only. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but the crazy thing is they do fibulas only but really really well yes and so <laughs> i absolutely love surgery so i'm like oh i'd love to try to fix this but it's in gladys's best interest that we have the people who are the best in their field to do well, it. that's and, nice of you to put um, that aside i'm sure it was like, tough <laughs> well, like i had put a plate on this fracture um but anyways um <laughs> so so we talked over scheduling and it came down to um um, one of the surgeons wasn't going to be available on um, the next day, and so we made it for the two days out. Um, they came over, we did it, we put on an initial cast. Um, a regular then, cast that a human might yeah, wear. Yeah, a regular yeah. fiberglass <laughs> cast, um, but we actually made two. So um, we put one on, took it off, and then people from GE took that cast and used it as a model to 3D print a titanium one. So we were just hoping that our fiberglass cast would hold up until the titanium one was done. Mm. And she chewed a nice chunk out of it um, <laughs> and didn't love it. Um, yeah. But by the um, time it was kind of at its, the cast was kind of nearing its end, um, GE came through with a really great cast yeah. that we were able to use. Um, that whole discussion about how to get a cast, a titanium or any kind of metal cast for her, um, was kind of just um, Christina, um, our director of animal care, and then um, David and, and I were kind of just sitting and talking about, huh, I wonder if there's a way to put something she can't break. Um, we're like, like what, metal? That's not a thing. But then it became a thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I think it's really interesting the amount of uh, businesses or establishments that we work with the zoo like has relationships with like that are also very close by. Mm -hmm. So, you know, children's hospital, we've worked with them in different ways. And then, um, we worked with UC students once on enrichment Christ, stuff. And bit. then, yeah, then, then there's now GE added to mm -hmm. the list. Um, I think it's really cool, but I want to go back to like the surgery. How did you guys decide like as a team and your team, like how many people were in the room? Did you want to be there? Like when there's a stressful animal situation, they're like under anesthesia. I'm the first person that's like, I'll clean that, that, and that, and that, and that for you. And you guys let me know if you need me in the, in the uh, procedure. I would rather stay away for the most part. Oh, I'm, because I'm it's totally interested. You want to be there? Our <laughs> department is very and... much like, you know what? We want everybody here. We want everybody to learn from this. We want everybody to experience it. So um, yeah, I mean, as long as you weren't in the way of the procedure and the surgeons and everything. Definitely like a our, lot of people there, as usual. Yeah, it was like Everybody our whole department will be there, um, so just for the learning process of So it. I imagine it was a very crowded yes. space. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and yeah. then how many vet staff and how many uh, human doctors were there? Um, the initial, well, I guess the surgery with the plate application had two vets, um, three vet techs, um, we had human anesthesiologists there from Christ Hospital um, for UC and um, surgeons from Children's Hospital, so three surgeons from Children's Hospital. Was and a part of that they were just excited and wanted to be a part of this, or did you need all of those surgeons? Or? Well, I think... <laughs> you know, like <laughs> a mix. I'm sure they were excited yeah. to be able to say, I've done surgery yeah, on a gorilla. Really. Yeah. I mean, I feel like... Any one of them could have done it without the others. Okay. It was probably more efficient having um, at least the orthopedic surgeons working together doing it um, when they knew exactly what they were going to do next. It just made things more efficient. That makes sense. One of the veterinarians could have scrubbed in and, and assisted as well. Um, but we were also kind of making sure that just as a patient she was stable and, mm -hmm. and um, things were going well. And um, We always like to have as many keepers or any staff who wants to see or be involved because these guys are right it is a great learning opportunity and it just makes us better as a, a team and as a zoo mm -hmm. and you said there was a, so a metal plate was put to reset the humerus right yeah two plates two plates um, okay yeah at like 90 degrees of each other um, because you have to keep it from bending or rotating and then um, pretty much we before the surgery said um, so pretend this is like an NFL receiver that's three feet tall. <laughs> the rest is the same. <laughs> um, and then during the surgery, they, they actually needed to redo, um, change out drill bits um, multiple times for drilling their pilot holes for the screws for the plate because her bone is significantly more dense than human bones are. Wow, and so that's it kept burning, 
burning up their their uh, drill bits. Wow. And so. Um, Glad they brought extra. Yeah. Well, and they also made made comments like, uh, "Oh yeah, glad we just brought the biggest things or the strongest things we had <laughs> and, uh, and extras." And, uh, yeah, you had to prepare, and there, yeah, there is a difference. They're very strong. I didn't realize they had a different bone density, though. Mm-hmm. How long did the whole oh, yeah. procedure take? I think the actual from injection to recovery was maybe I don't know three and a half hours somewhere Sounds around there. the actual surgery I believe was closer to two hours okay um, but there's a lot of prep and yeah. um, transportation and then mm-hmm. transporting her back and um, we don't wake her up in the hospital because um, it's not really made to <laughs> hold gorillas <laughs> <laughs> the glass you know all the glass viewing areas might not be so, <laughs> so gorilla great. proof yeah well that's incredible and so then you talk to GE and how long did that first fiberglass uh, cast last before GE got you the titanium? Literally, uh, we had a countdown. Four days? <laughs> no, okay, it, so the surgery was on Sunday, and then um, the um, the cast, I believe, was done on a, on a Friday, mm-hmm. the f- yeah. that same, that following Friday. So, because um, I remember I um, was supposed to come in late to watch her that mm-hmm. night. Mm. Um, but I actually ended up getting sick. Oh, no. So I couldn't cover that shift. Um, it was about four days, and then she kind of accepted her fate, I think, at okay. that point. Yeah. And she kind of started leaving it alone. I oh, good. It, oh, I was going to okay. say, I think it, um, she... Well, we had to do anything we could to distract her yeah. Yeah. from the cast, yeah, yeah. because she was just she so, was like, so watched you guys 24 doing? hours a day. Yeah, okay. she was watched 24 hours a day. Overnight, just making sure she left her cast alone. Yes. The fiberglass one. Um, and she had pain meds and things to make her um, not care as much. About yes, it. but <laughs> she still cared her. a lot about it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we were we had a countdown going on because I remember the whole staff was really stressed out because we mm. were just like we wanted her to just keep that arm untouched, like mm. um, don't don't mess it up before we get that titanium cast. Um, and towards the end, there like kind of the whole top hat, like that whole top segment of the arm was gone. Um, cause she had just been ripping at it so yeah. much. Um, and so, yeah, it lasted pretty much just until we needed it to, thankfully. Yeah. Um, and. But they made a titanium cast yes. within a week, essentially. Yes, like, and exactly. they built yeah. it, yes. measured it, built well, they it. Had yes. to, yeah, they had to design it all and then start up. The, it took like a day to start the machines up, mm-hmm. I think it was. Oh and gosh. then it took multiple days to print it. Wow. And so they must have been really excited about this collaboration oh, yeah. too, correct? Um, I think yeah. I saw photos Super of them excited. like yeah. beaming, like holding it or yeah. getting to be a part of this. I actually have two friends that work there. Oh, no way. <laughs> um, and then once like, you know, all of a sudden done, like the legalities on it, they both reached out to me and they're like, oh my gosh. We heard that Gladys broke her arm. Our <laughs> yeah. company's working on this. Like, this is so cool. Well, I mean, it's not cool that she broke her arm. Right. No, but just having that opportunity, like, they right. were super mm-hmm. hyped about it. But yeah. this meant you had to do another procedure where she had to be mm-hmm. anesthetized mm-hmm. and take the fiberglass cast off and put the titanium cast on. And did that go smoothly and the cast fit perfectly and all of Yeah. Yeah. Um, she had, I don't know, what, like five procedures or something. Yeah, because oh, we had, um, like... like checkups in between and stuff too just okay. to Radiographs, see how that's yeah you know, making sure that everything's healing fine yeah um so she was anesthetized i believe five times maybe total six times with five, I think. five or six times total from start to okay. end yeah they all went smoothly she's um well knock on wood you can probably hear it on the thing um, <laughs> <laughs> uh she's been a very stable easy keeper patient yes. um, with anesthesia good that's yeah because that's always a scary thing um and i find it interesting this doesn't really have anything to do with this story but people when we have to go under anesthesia and then you wake up you're like kind of out of it and you need someone to take care of you and baby you yeah. and you can't eat and is there something different is it just the way the drugs or are animals just that much tougher where you know, an hour after they've been woken up from anesthesia, they're most of them are. You know, it differs depending on the animal. So we have some scenario. gorillas. Say gorillas that, you know, are, are very similar. similar. Yeah. Yeah. Very similar. They're, they're babies about it. Okay. They, even like the next day, they can still be like groggy okay. and stuff like that. That's interesting. So, yeah. Maybe it's maybe more it's prey a animals. Thing. Maybe it's a primate. <laughs> yeah, but I'm thinking of like hoofstock. Maybe they just yeah. have to be on alert, so they are. I don't know yeah. if you can speak to that, Doctor Mike. But like, it's just interesting how they aren't. They aren't. They don't have to be babied, and they're up mm-hmm. and walking around and sometimes eating by the end of the day. Meerkats, they're really quick, usually. 
I think the closer you get to being a human, <laughs> the more of a weenie you are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so like, if, right. if, there's if correlation. You're, if you're a lizard, you don't care about anesthesia. <laughs> but if you're a bonobo, it's the end of the world, that's, right? Yeah, um, that makes sense. Because so like, I feel like we, I was like, when you said you don't baby them, I was like, we definitely baby them. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want some juice? Like, <laughs> I'm just thinking, like, the bigger the gorilla, like, the silverbacks are oh, the biggest yeah. babies. When well, I'll say boys stuff. in general are babies yeah, compared to girls. So. Guilty yeah, as I'm charged. Not, <laughs> for sure. I was going to say, I'm yeah. not going to agree nor disagree. <laughs> but I agree. I just didn't want to pick a mark. <laughs> say, the, the most sensitive animals I have worked with by far are the males. Like, really? All yeah. the species, yes. That's so funny. Yeah, yeah, that checks out. We're not as hardy. We, yeah, we like to put, up, put, like, put on and act tough, but we yeah. are not that tough. We're just fine. Now take care of me. <laughs> <laughs> oh man that's funny but how does the process work with like actually getting the cast on because obviously it's metal does it come in like pieces and you have to like assemble it around her arm like what's that look like yeah it was um so it was so think of it as kind of like an l shape in a way a soft l <laughs> um and it was uh split in half um and then they had like bands that went around that okay. you could adjust um with a drill or, or with it was like basically nut and bolts, um, and then you could um, tighten it or loosen it based off of those bands that are around it. And how did she react once she woke up with a titanium cast on her arm? Like I can imagine that's pretty jarring. You, your arm suddenly weighs what, like ten pounds? Yes, yeah, it's actually yeah. pretty heavy. It was, honestly, when she recovered from that and she yeah. had that, it was like it was nothing like the fiberglass oh. um, cast experience where she was just like, ew, what is this? I mean, she definitely was like, you know, throughout the, the time, she would even stick sticks down there to scratch, scratch and stuff. Yeah. Oh, I've done um, that before. <laughs> but like, she, um, she would, just kind of was like, okay. And she would even use the arm. Go, she would lightly use the arm to mm-hmm. um, walk on it and everything. Oh, wow. Um, kind and, of like use her fingers to like hold up. Yeah. They're so smart and like have hands like do they try and did she try and so like she, loosen any of the nuts no because it was actually Bolts, covered nuts. in yeah. <laughs> the titanium cast was covered in another basically fiberglass type oh okay. Okay. so she didn't have access to that i see because gladys is one of the few gorillas actually that we mm-hmm. have that goes around and unscrews everything see and that's yeah. what that's freaky. You mentioned yeah. That's you, freaky. <laughs> you like did half days, and I did half day in Jungle Trails. I've told the story probably fifty times on this podcast. But as soon as I did one internship with primates, and yeah. I, I didn't do much as an intern, it's not you know super safe. But I was like, nope. There, there are many <laughs> reasons, but no, thank you. One of them being that they will pull on locks or check behind mm-hmm. you and yeah, they can they unscrew well, that's, things. That's and... one of the things I think why I've been with primates uh-huh. for so long is because they do keep you on your yeah. toes. Yeah. I mean, here I am almost 20 years later, and I'm still having to use my brain to think of new and innovative ways yeah. to do things. Yes. So no, you're either a primate person or not. <laughs> <laughs> that's my belief. That's true. You are you aren't. <laughs> that's very true. That's funny. So... Throughout this process, while Gladys has her cast on, does she, is she with the other gorillas? Can she see mm-hmm. the other gorillas? Because I imagine that's like a weapon, right? Like she's yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> she's a weapon of mass yeah. destruction. <laughs> right. uh, she had they had visual access to each other the entire time. Okay, so um, just across the hallway, basically, or so mesh. really yes, that and they would still have access out on habitat, um, but a lot of time, so they could go out on habitat, but they would. Um, also had bedroom space to sit in too right next to hers um, and they would pretty much like go out on the habitat for like 10 minutes to like collect whatever food they wanted and then they would all like pile back in just to be next to her oh, which nice. is really a testament to the relationship mm-hmm. that they have with her mm-hmm. um, especially in belly because in belly like the more a silverback wants to be around a female and that um, speaks to the um the strength of the relationship he has with her, okay. um, especially uh, the amount uh, of how close he lets you get within, like, um, vis- like his vicinity and his proximity in relation to his body. Um, and so the fact that he would always come back in and check on her and everything is, like, um, that's that says mm-hmm. that that's a really cohesive group right there. Um, so despite their um, hierarchy issues, um, they are a very strong group. And if someone is missing, it's, you know, it's not a good thing. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, it was it was really cool. You know, they still cared a lot about her, and they would look through the mesh and just like watch what she's doing the entire time. Yeah, we pretty and, much just shifted yeah. the group like we would normally. She just followed behind with one door in between her. Yeah. Own. Okay. Yeah. 
That makes sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, that's interesting to hear you say that because I think like that's with humans too. Sometimes like facing adversity can yeah. actually pull a group together. Exactly. That's really, mm-hmm. how did Gladys handle it? Like, was she still eating normally? Was she still behaving like, rel- obviously yeah. she's not going to behave normally with a broken arm, but right. relatively normal? It was relatively normal. Um, I think at first her appetite wasn't the best, mm-hmm. um, but she is just kind of was like, you know, all this change is happening. We were also mm-hmm. offering um, her quite a bit of extra stuff yeah. <laughs> that she normally yeah, yeah. wouldn't get to, you know, because um, we... Yeah, we wanted her to eat. We just wanted her to be happy. Yeah. Um, and, you know, a, after a week or so of acclimating to the, what just was the situation, the situation in general, um, yeah. yeah, everything, they kind of settled in and, you know, she ate normally again and stuff. And um, and we managed yeah. them specifically, you know, when we set enrichment out, we make sure the enrichment for both her and the group was near each other. Okay. Yeah. So we kind of purposely made the group come together and interact with each other. So just to... Help her feel yeah, well. Yeah, help her feel a little bit better. To make, make sure that she's still part of the group and she's not, you know, getting left behind or anything. Yeah. Um, yeah, she did She did great. The group did great. Yeah. So when did her cast get removed for the final time and how is she doing now? When did it get removed? Uh, it's um, a blur. <laughs> so it was eight, was it eight weeks? It was eight weeks after the end. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I don't remember the exact day when uh, it was. No, I can't. Oh, that's I was okay. Here. You don't talk, but eight yeah. weeks later. Um, so. Yeah, it was eight weeks later. It was on a Wednesday. Mm-hmm. That's, that's healed, what I remember. Healed fine. Healed fine. Um, you guys are doing physical therapy with her, right? Yes, we are. Will you tell us a little bit about that training? Mm-hmm. Um, so right now, um, she is doing a series of stretches, and then she actually does um, work with an exercise band. Yeah. <laughs> like. Um, so she does a lot of like pulling and stuff. Um, and you can see that, um, like the muscle tissue has actually rebuilt when she got the cast off. It was just like, you Skin know, and bones. Twig arm. yeah, it was like wow. a twig arm mm-hmm. um, on top of her arm being and just shaped, eight weeks yeah. to not see that gorilla hair. Yeah. There. Oh on yeah. Top of it, it just looked so small. <laughs> yes. Um, and her arm lo- uh, looks almost pretty much normal now at this point in terms of size and definition. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, but honestly, just her everyday routine, like climbing moving, through everything, yeah. moving through, um, is helping rebuild that muscle and stuff too. You can see her still walking around. Um, it's still very bent, um, and it may, it could potentially always kind of look that way, um, and she may never use it completely normally. Um, but what do you attribute that than to? Yeah. Is it um, just muscle memory? It's used to being like that from the cast. Is it? But it's fully healed. Like yeah, so the bone is fully healed, but. Um, your tendons and ligaments, when you have them kind of fixed for an amount of time, um, they, they kind of become more like fixed or rigid in place. And so stretching is important. Mm-hmm. And um, she'll probably have some loss of like the range of her motion in her elbow, mm-hmm. but um, she should be completely functional and comfortable. I think mm-hmm. so. All we could really hope for is that A, she keeps her arm, and then B, it's you know functional for her yeah. and, and mm-hmm. comfortable. And there were a couple times, correct me if I'm wrong, throughout the process where you guys did a procedure just to get some motion in her arm, right? Yeah, at all of her rechecks. Yeah, at okay. all of her rechecks. rechecks. Okay. We, yeah, we would um, work with her range of motion. But even now, like, so it's the beginning of. Um, you know, with the cast is taken off and starting her PT, um, like her range of motion was very limited. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I just did her PT yesterday afternoon and the, there's just a significant difference and she's able to, it's like much more well-oiled and um, moving around. Like, I hadn't done it for now. like a week yeah. and then I did it and it was like, wow, she can really, I mean, yeah. bend it in a lot more yeah. than what I saw just a week prior. Yeah. That's awesome. So she's definitely making progress and It'll take, it'll be even more progress, and I'm sure it will change up the type of PT she's getting throughout um, throughout all of it, so as she continues to improve. Sure. Dr. Mike, from your perspective, like, how long do you think it could be till she's, like, the best she's going to get? Whether she gets that full range of motion back or not, like, is it a month? Is it a year? Is it... I would say probably six to seven months. Okay. Um, because when you think about like tendon injuries or ligament injuries, you're in that six to seven month time of healing. And so um, just getting all of the strength back and having normal forces on those um, should help it progress. And it, it could be six or seven months. That makes sense. I feel like, like you mentioned, she's a wide receiver earlier. Like that's what you do with yeah. a lot of like sports yeah. injuries is like six to seven months for recovery. She'll, so. she'll be ready right, right around the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> 
that's awesome. Do you guys have anything else about the story or the collaboration or any or Gladys in general that you want to fill us in? I on? mean, I just want to give a shout out to everybody that was involved, mm. our team. Um, I think I don't think what people realize when we were watching her twenty four seven that was pulling staff from that we normally have to clean. We have a lot of other animals mm -hmm. we take care of, and that's pulling staff that from taking care of those animals to watch Gladys at night. So even if you weren't directly involved and you're just an intern, like you had more on your shoulders during that time. Yeah. Um, so that part was pretty stressful. So getting that titanium cast really alleviated a ton of that for a department. Um, I bet. But yeah, just thanking everybody involved and how smoothly it came together. I was super impressed. Um, yeah, just wanted to thank everybody. Yeah, from the sidelines, we were impressed. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> we were like impressed. getting updates, just cheering everyone yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> did you see what they just did? Oh, that's, <laughs> awesome. yeah. that's cool to hear. We should I have told like, you guys. I guess. I we're so like <laughs> yeah. isolated in our in our own bubble, and we're obviously absorbed in our world. Yes. So that's really cool that you guys are cheering for. Yeah. Yes, lives. definitely. I know how much teamwork it takes when you have an injured, or you know, we have experience with Fiona, that sort of thing, where it just mm -hmm. takes the whole the team, whole but you squad, still have yeah. other. Animals. Animals. Yeah, like exactly. one animal does, takes all this time, but everyone else needs the attention. So yeah, it's right. a lot of people. Yeah. And especially in this case, like this is just such a unique event because not only is it people from the zoo stepping up, right? It's people from GE. It's people mm -hmm. from Children's and UC. It's just like an insane whole community event where all these forces came together for good. You love to see it. <laughs> it's very cool. I think it's really neat that our zoo is so community based in Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. Like. I think Thane always says it's a zoo town or yeah, something a, like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah it is. Um, the people zoo. Yes. <laughs> um, I wanted to mention before we end, World Gorilla Day is coming yes. up. We're recording this early August. I'm not entirely sure the exact date this will come out at, at this point, but World Gorilla Day is in September. Can you guys um, tell us about that and what you do for it? Mm -hmm. um, so it's on World Gorilla Day always falls on September 24th, um, but the weekend just before, it's like the 24th, first and the 22nd and yeah. um that will be kind of when we do our main girl gorilla day celebration um so there will be a way, chance to enter yourself into a vip um training situation wow Amazing. that's cool because yes. gorillas are like kind of i don't know they're just like they're true What's the right word? Like hidden, you don't the like, holy grail. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> because you know they can get sick from humans and all sorts of things. I feel like your behind the scenes opportunities well, are very rare. It's not going to be technically behind the. That scenes. makes more sense. Um, okay, so, but still very cool. Yes. Yeah, so um, <laughs> what we did last last year is that um, you know we had the indoor shut off like it was uh, before zoo hours, so it was um, kind of it's like only a private, you yeah, in the indoor habitat yes. area and the. Where the guests and the key, yeah. Okay. Um, so you and then um, you can see one of our boys in Belly do um, his painting um, oh, and cool. stuff like do that. Oh, cool! Do a training session. Do a training and... session painting. Um, you guys can get that painting, um, and then that'll also be Gladys's group. So you'll be able to see yeah, Gladys. Yeah, Gladys. Um, and um, kind of just like a more private, like keeper talk type thing. Very yeah, cool. because unfortunately. Um, I would love for everybody to come behind the scenes and see what we do, but because of um, uh, disease and germ tra transmission, yeah, we're pretty off limits to the public. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, those vet people are really sticky. <laughs> <laughs> those vet people, man. Those vet people, uh, man. No um, fun because of those vet people. Uh, ruin it all. <laughs> so they'll have the opportunity to learn more about gorillas. Yes. You'll do extra chats, yes. maybe or extra chat, a chance to do this. We don't even do like the keeper chats, so it is like a like. Um, but yeah. you guys will this day. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can come so, talk to yeah, the gorilla one keepers. Of us, yeah, one of the keepers themselves. And we've mentioned this in a past episode, but uh, something you can do to help gorillas specifically and a lot of animals, but is to recycle cell phones. Will you guys be talking about that and mm -hmm. highlighting? Yeah. So there's always a drop box down in um in our habitat or the gorilla habitat area, gorilla world, I guess it's called. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, where you any sort of cell phone or small electronic, anything smaller than a laptop. Um, can be turned in, um, and then we collect them all and we send them off to um, EcoCell. EcoCell, thank you. I wanted mm -hmm. to say go re go recycle or something. <laughs> <laughs> EcoCell, um, and then they um, recycle the cell phones because in cell phones there's a mineral called coltan, which is found in um, harvested from uh, gorilla habitats in the wild. Um, so it helps reduce that invasion um, and destruction. <laughs> I want to use the dramatic words. Um, <laughs> 
And so, yeah, we were part of that program. Mm -hmm. Um, And that weekend is also a weekend where you can just come and learn um, more about uh, what the gorillas are doing. Like, we have enrichment devices and stuff out that kids can experiment Mm -hmm. with um, to see how they work and what the gorillas have to do to try to figure them out. Um, And then... um, I think this year we might do some temporary tattoos. Ooh, fun. Um, nice stuff. Some, yeah, some fun little things here to get kids, you know, more involved and excited. Um, but, yeah, the VIP um, training experience will be a quiz that's available um, through a QR code that will be throughout. Um, and then also it will be posted probably on social media and stuff. Awesome. Um, and it has to do with, and as long as you participate, you will get an entry because it's pretty hard. <laughs> um, so researchers, um, years and years ago, 50 years ago, you know, Diane Fossey was the first, you know, uh, woman or person to, um, you know, habituate gorillas and study them. And she used to draw their nose prints to help identify them. Um, and so that's what we've done is we've drawn their nose prints. Um, and then you try to match the nose print with individuals. Oh, wow. Um, so... That's kind of the basis of the quiz. Okay, we don't expect fun. people to, like, it's pretty hard to do. <laughs> I um, have trouble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds hard. Um, but I've it definitely got to take I'll this say, quiz. It's a fun <laughs> learning experience and challenge yourself that way. Um, because, yeah, I mean, people, it's hard to identify uh species that aren't your con specific so mm-hmm. yeah and then you'll have the chance to do this yeah. VIP and you training have the, session you have your training. automatic entry to the vip session very cool it. so that'll yeah. be september 21st is when this will be ha- taking place at the zoo yes. yeah, yeah. and then uh september 24th is actual world yeah and the, day. the quiz will you post it a week ahead of time i think so Whatever PR on social to do. media. And okay. <laughs> so people have last, like a week last to year do we, it. we did it. We yeah. did it like a couple days leading up. So, you know, p- people watching social media and yeah. stories and things like that yeah, will yeah. be able to get a link to. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So, we mentioned the cell phone recycling, but I do have a final question with another option of what can I do? What is something I can do to support gorillas? So, something you can do is um, I'm actually, this will be my second annual um, fundraiser for gorilla conservation. Um, it's called Waits for Apes, um, and it takes place on September 28th, um, and it's, it's basically, you know, I come from a world of competitive weightlifting, um, and, um, it's just a deadlift max out party where it's just for fun. Um, anybody can participate, young and old. My mom does it. Um, she's 65 years old. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, and then I've had, you know, young kids do it too. Um, so it doesn't matter, um, it, and it's just a thirty dollar um, entry fee, um, and it takes. I, I have it hosted up this year at um, CrossFit Illuminate. It's a gym out in Loveland. Okay. Um, but you know, a lot of people, it's not their cup of tea, and that's totally fine. Um, but donations can still be made. Um, I just do them through Venmo, um, and um, all the money, all the proceeds um, are donated to uh, the Safe Gorilla Program. Um, and that is a program that helps support and maintain, um, two subspecies of gorilla, which is the cross river gorilla. There's only about 300 left of them in the wild. And they're so like elusive that they've really only been observed on camera traps. Wow. Um, so research researchers that have been out there for like decades have never, you know, seen them in person. Um, and then, um, the other species that's supported is the growers gorilla, which is an Eastern species. Um, and, um, can't, I can't remember off the top of my head the number of species of um, individuals that are left, but they are both considered critically endangered. Um, so the money just goes to help support and maintain those populations. Um, and the organizations that um, uh, that do these is the Diane Gorilla Fossey Fund, um, and then shoot, it's either the WCS or the um, Wildlife Foundation. Um, I always get my W's confused. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The um, acronyms are tough. <laughs> uh, but it does, it's, yeah, yeah, it's donated through the um, Safe Gorilla program, and then they designate where the where the money goes. They split the money up. That's amazing. Yeah. That's such a fun yeah. idea, and I think it's really cool that you, yeah. like, took it on your own to mm-hmm. make this conservation effort. Is there a Facebook page or anything where they can find more information about the event? Yes. Um, there is an Instagram page. It's waits for the number four apes. Um, and it's spelled out, you know, W E I G H T S for apes, A P E S. Um, and there's a link there, or there's a link in the bio where you can, um, um, make donations, um, or, um, and, um, submit 
for the entry fee or whatever. And then also just the um, link to the SAFE program awesome. um, to, for more information there. To see where your money's going. Yes, basically. exactly. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. And how much did you raise last year? It last year last year was my first year and I raised 2000 That's awesome. That's, um, that's incredible. Thank yeah, you. that's thank you. incredible. Um, there's also, like, I'm doing a silent auction there as well. So the day, like, even if you don't participate, people can come. There's a silent auction there with um, behind the scenes experiences, um, one that, with, like, Snow Leopard. I think there's um, one going to be with Penguin and then the other animal art. And then I have, um, like, other people um, that I know in life that are um, donating, like, their art to um, the event. And then I have a little bake sale happening because <laughs> I have a lot of friends that love to make the best cookies. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, just, so just stuff like that. Um, and I hope that you guys come out and support it. <laughs> That's awesome. Yes. Yeah. Waits for yeah, yeah. apes. It'll be in Loveland. Will you say the gym again? CrossFit Illuminate. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Well, I think it's amazing what you're Thank doing, you. all I of you. It. Of course, that event will be amazing. I hope people can join. Uh, do you guys have anything else? I don't. Okay. I, don't. I think we touched on Well, good work. Good teamwork. Awesome. Thank awesome. you for Thanks. talking to <laughs> us. You are awesome. <laughs> That's the best ending we've ever had. Yeah. Everyone's oh awesome. We hope you have an awesome day, and thanks for listening. Yeah, kudos to all your teams. Incredible work being done here. you love to see it. Thanks, for everyone, for tuning in. Go check out that Waits for Apes, and come check out our gorillas here at the zoo. Yes, yeah, come definitely. See them. And yeah. World Gorilla Day. Come celebrate. Definitely. Until yes. next time. Yes. Take care, everyone. Bye.